Hey, hey, all you minties, this is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition, and join me today for an advanced look at these upcoming collected editions from Marvel Comics. So, let's get started. Before getting started, a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the fine folks at Marvel for sending us advanced copies of these complete collections. These are your last complete collections in the month of March in the direct market. These will be available in a couple of weeks in the book market. So today we're going to kick it off with this brand new series called Shang-Chi Brothers and Sisters. So let's check this out together. Kicking off these books this week with this series that came out in 2020. And this collects all five issues of that miniseries. And this is written by Jean Luen Yang, who is a phenomenal writer. Uh, the Astonishing Melanie and I have reviewed Dragon Hoops, but he's written Boxers and Saints. Uh, he's written Superman, New Superman for DC. And I'm so happy to see him work on this particular title because Shang-Chi is a character that kind of has been in the shadows for a long time. Well, with the exception, of course, of his ongoing series in the 70s and the magazine. However, he's just an obscure character for a lot of people. A lot of people don't realize who he is or what his powers are or how he's involved or has been involved in the Marvel Universe in the past. Yeah, you know, he's had limited series before. He's been a part of the Avengers. As a matter of fact, I think Hick, Hick Avengers has done the best part of actually putting him on the spotlight. But even then, he's still in the shadows most of the time because that cast was huge. And I'll be talking about Hick Avengers here in a little bit. So it's nice to see him in his own limited series, just focusing on him and adding a whole new mythos to his just background and his character. So... What this does, it's called Brothers and Sisters for a reason, because through this series you get to find out, and it's a little bit of a redcon, but not much of one, that Shang-Chi um, is part of these five brothers and sisters, so he's one of the five members of them. And all five of them make up something known as the Five Weapon Society. So they're all like Sister Hammer, Brother Staff, and then you have the Deadly Hands of Kung Fu, Shang-Chi. So this is, um, by the way, something you probably noticed right away is the art for the flashbacks are all drawn by a different artists. That's Philip Tan. And the art for the modern time or the now part of the storyline is all drawn by Dyke Ran. Now, Philip Tan has worked on X-Men in the past with <clears throat> Chuck Austin, uh, and he's had a run on Spawn. Uh, he's had a run on Green Lantern. And then Dyke Ran, I think he's drawn some stuff for Spider-Verse is the only thing that I remember seeing. So... Here we have, you know, th this background of this really deadly storyline that's happening. The sister wants to get rid of all the brothers and be the one in charge. Meanwhile, you have, you know, Shang-Chi just hanging out at Grandma Wang's restaurant. He's a delivery boy and kind of a badass. And then we have some returning characters for the people that have been reading uh, this character for a long time. We have Leiko Wu come back in, in here. But I really, this this was a really fun story, and this basically summarizes what this is all about. This is the ending of issue one, and it's not that big of a deal, because I think this is the big premise. I have to save my little sisters, what he's thinking, and she's, I have to kill my big brother. That's pretty much what all of this encompasses. Every issue has a back uh, a flashback issue, which is all, like I mentioned, drawn by Philip Tan. And then we get into what is currently happening and how, you know, he's fighting his own destiny or does he want to take uh, the destiny of his into his own deadly hands, if you will. But just showcasing some of this artwork, we will get to see all his brothers and sisters. His father may or may not play a role in all of this, but you can find out for yourself. Now, what's really cool about this, what I just found out, is that this is um, leading into a new series that comes out later on this year, I think in May sometime. So sometime in May, we're going to be getting a new Shang-Chi series. Might have something to do with the movie that's coming out later this year, but it doesn't matter. I think for a character like him, it's time that he comes back into the spotlight again he was a very cool character and just randomly showing up in issues of x-men which we'll be talking about here in a little bit in heroes for hire um, so it's nice to see him in his own magazine let's look magazine comic book let's look in the back for extras censoring that final page because i don't want to spoil that for anybody but over here we have the character guides of these new characters uh, we have the different houses house of the deadly staff house of the deadly saber uh, deadly dagger Deadly Hammer, and Deadly Hands. Of course, everybody knows who that is. 
Uh, the book, by the way, has 120 pages and retails for $15.99. Here we have some variants. And you could probably tell when I was flipping through here a little bit that some of the variants are also on the opposite page of the regular cover. But some of them are back here as little thumbnails. And we do have... Let's just go to Young one and see that. We do have this kick-ass cover here by Jimmy Chung. Next up, we have Shang-Chi, Earth's Mightiest Martial Artist. Now, this is one that I've seen a different placeholder for the cover. I've seen this by David Aha on the cover. And I've seen one by Mike Mayhew, Mayhew who did the art in the Avengers. I saw that on the cover. But this is the actual cover here. This is Gil Kane. And this collects just appearances of the character of Shang-Chi throughout different comic books in the Marvel Universe from the 90s to the aughts. So we kick it off with X-Men. So we have Adjectiveless X-Men here, 62 through 64. And I'll be talking about that in my X-Men reading order sometime. I kicked that off last week. Hoping to do one this week, if not next week. So here we have, like I said, X-Men 62 to 64. Then we have Heroes for Hire issues 18 and 19 the shadowland spider-man one shot number one secret avengers number 18 and then avengers number 11 the hick vengers era so this stuff here is written by scott lobdell it's got a script by ben robb and then carlos pacheco does the main artwork and you're probably wondering why wolverine looks like an ogre well because of changes <laughs> because of wolverine 100 so it takes place during that era as a matter of fact this takes place during an interesting era with um, Operation Zero Tolerance. So the basic plot of this is that Shang-Chi is helping the X-Men to take care of this new uh, kingpin that has taken over some of the land. And then we also have the return of an, an, another character that we thought was dead, another villain. But I will let you find out for yourself who that kingpin is that has taken over this land that Shang-Chi is helping to fight. But the ending does lead into the Operation Zero Tolerance, I will say that. So, pretty interesting to put that in here. Then we have the Heroes for Hire. This is stuff I honestly have not read, so I'm not familiar with. I know that I I read some of the earlier issues, because this was during a time when I was leaving comics. But it was... Um, oh, who was it? The, John Ostrander wrote the issues. But the art here is drawn by... Pascalis Ferry. Now, is that Pasqual Ferry, the same artist that did um, some of the Adam Strange storylines? And he's had a huge run on, uh, on lots of Marvel comics, too. So I wonder if that's the same artist. It looks a little bit different. I'm, I'm just wondering if anybody knows that. Is that the same artist as Pasqual Ferry? Because the art looks different enough, even for back then, that I don't think it's his art style, but I could be wrong. Anyway, this is a story about Madripoor and teaming up with Wolverine and the Heroes for Hire. It's only two issues. And then we get to the Shadowland one-shot. So this is seriously everything after those Omnis. This is how rare of an appearance Shang-Chi would make in the Marvel Universe. So here he is with Spider-Man and Shadowland. There's a decade in between this and the previous comic, uh, Heroes for Hire. Actually, probably more than a ne decade. Here he's fighting the Negative Man. And then we have the Secret Avengers where he teams up with Captain America and Mockingbird. To stop Arnim Zola. This is the David Aha issue, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. War written by Warren Ellis. And then the final issue collected in here is, of course, part of the Hickvengers era. Drawn by Mike Deodato Jr. And this is where he plays a bigger role. But like I said, even when he plays a bigger role, he's still overshadowed by all <laughs> by this huge cast of Avengers. But it's nice to see him actually join the Avengers team officially. Now, this book retails for $24.99, and this one has 192 pages in it. As far as extras in the back, I don't think there's anything. Nope. Nada. Just an advertisement for the Marvelverse Shang-Chi. I'm so glad to see the return of this particular complete collection. This is Avengers Academy Complete Collection Volume 3. Wrapping up this so underrated, so wonderful, amazing run by Christos Gage. 
Um, so this is Avengers Academy. Then we have Hasmat up here on the front cover. This is a follow-up to the Avengers The Initiative, the also collected in complete collection. But this collects the final issues of that. So this collects issues 21 through 39 of this amazing series that originated back in, oh man, it's been over a decade, uh, 2010. So here are the characters. You have Finesse, Hazmat, Metal, Reptile, Striker, and Veal. And then you have their teachers, Giant Man, Quicksilver, Tigra, Justice, Speedball, and Jocasta. Now, you're probably thinking, oh man, this guy just likes Avengers Academy because some of the teachers are part of the New Warriors. Yes, that's a huge reason why. But I also just started bonding with the kids when I was reading this. I really enjoyed the kids. So this leads into the Avengers Arena, which then leads into the Avengers Underground. And you can probably tell why I don't like that series that much, or the arena that much. Because it was a Battle Royale type of story. Battle Royale from the, uh, the book, the manga, and the movies. But... It's that type of story where they kill off a bunch of characters, and uh, yeah, I wasn't that big of a fan. Now, the book here, you know, it's it's sold well enough. You have Sean Chan on artwork. Uh, you have, eventually, Tom Grumet takes over the book. Uh, but it's just a really fun story about these kids. And think of books like New Mutants or Generation X, Young Avengers. But this was all put into place because of the in Avengers Initiative during that era and yes reptile did come from that cartoon that i cannot remember not earth's mightiest heroes i can't i just remember my kids watching it when i was when they were younger i guess i was younger too but it had a catchy theme song anyway i can't remember where reptile came from originally he came from a cartoon please let me know in the comments down below there's tom grumet's amazing artwork and there is to bump up sales, because the book, like I said, was, you know, it sold well enough, but it, they wanted to sell better. Uh, they started introducing some new characters to the kids. And one of those characters was X-23. So X-23 eventually joins uh, the kids. Oh, this is the fight with the runaways. See what I mean? So awesome. And, yes, Logan drops off X-23, and he's like, okay, here you go. It's time for you to start getting along with these kids. And this era was just so fun to me. And this wraps it up because, oh yeah, you've seen, you see obscure characters come back here, like the Sentinel from the Sentinel miniseries, or the Sentinel ongoing series during the Tsunami years by Sean McKeever. Still remember my boy Thomas Judge giving me a custom bind of that particular omnibus. Thank you so much. Big shout out to Thomas Judge and his channel. But this is what the artwork looks like. Mike McCone is the guy that started the series, and this wraps it up. So this book retails for $44.99, has 416 pages, and wraps up the Avengers Academy story, which actually is all part of the, what is it, Avengers X-Men uh, storyline, Avengers vs. X-Men storyline. They play a small role in that, but a role nonetheless. At the end, we get this goodbye letter from Christos Gage, and then... We get thumbnails and the cover process. Yeah, this is all part of the Avengers vs. X-Men era. Unused covers, the layouts and the process again for each of the covers. And that's the final cover. Man, it's weird going back and looking at this because I've missed this series. I haven't read it in a couple of years. I've, I've read it twice and I've asked Melanie to read it to see what she thought of it. But to me, it's just one of these underrated series nobody talked about, and I try to push for it when I had a podcast many years ago. Actually, this is probably one of the last series I was pushing for before I called it quits on my podcast. But yes, if you've not checked it out, check out Volume 1. Actually, check out Avengers The Initiative, which kicks all this off. So there's two Avengers Initiative volumes in complete collection, and then three of these Avengers Academy volumes in complete collections. Alright all you spine watchers, time to pause the video. Don't forget to hit like though, and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. We put out videos every day, but here you go. Here are all the spines. Here we have Avengers by Jonathan Hickman, Complete Collection Volume 4. Or what most of us have dubbed these, Hickvengers Volume 4. So this is a huge book, and it's finally out, 518 pages. This one retails for $44.99, there's your Volume 1. But this is finally here. A lot of people were worried that this was canceled, but they didn't see it in the solicitations because it got 
kept getting pushed back and pushed back, but it is finally here. This collects issues 24 through 34 of Avengers, and then New Avengers 13 through 23. And remember, New Avengers, there was only one release every month, whereas Avengers was released twice a month. So this has all of Jonathan Hickman's storyline here from the Rogue Planet to the time travel era. And I'm not going to get into detail. We've done a review of this on Old Reader, New Reader on the Omnis. Um, and I don't know when those will be reprinted if you're going to ask. Uh, so I think they're probably going to wait until these sell out, the complete collections. But you have artwork in here by Ezad Ribic, Salvador La Roca, Lionel Francis Yu, uh, Mike Deodato Jr., Rags Morales, and just a bunch of different artists that help out through this series. Oh, Simone Bianchi here. Somebody just told me how to pronounce his name. Bianchi or Bianchi? I think it was Bianchi. And I still could be butchering it. This is all in the aftermath of Infinity. So we do have a new Illuminati. And I kind of glanced through it, but that's not the final Illuminati. There is a new Illum Illuminati that is formed through here. So all of this leads into his final last hurrah on the book, which is Time Runs Out. And of course, all of that leads into Secret Wars. And if you know anything about Hickman and the way that he writes these stories ever since uh, Secret Warriors, things will start leading into other books. So the things that you saw in Secret Warriors, Fantastic Four, his Ultimates, all of that is coming to play here. And then all of it comes into full fruition in the pages of Secret Wars. And I'm talking about Secret Wars from 2016, not the original Secret Wars, of course. And something you've probably noticed is the lack of covers because Hickman decides how to map these books out. So worry not, this is all mapped out by Jonathan Hickman in the reading order that he suggests or strongly suggest, I guess, or he helps out the collected editions department because he wants people to enjoy the stories for the way that they were written and published, but sometimes that doesn't work out, so he suggests doing it in a reading order. So sometimes, um, and what I mean by that is sometimes you'll have part of an issue of New Avengers and then part of an issue of Avengers and then you continue into the remaining issue of New Avengers. It's a little confusing, uh, but you can tell when he does it because there's different artists on the book. But it flows so good. I mean, that's the way that the omnibus are mapped out. So I really enjoy that about the way that he does it. And because he leaves out all the covers, he puts them all... In... What's up, Black Widow? Man, that's a good Black Widow. It's Lionel Francis Hugh. So we're... The hell was I? Oh, yes, he leaves out all the covers because he doesn't want the stories to be interrupted. It's done on purpose. No, it's not a mistake. He wants all of these stories uninterrupted. So when you get to the back, this is where you'll find all the covers and the variant covers. So you'll have the covers for New Avengers 16, 17, 18, and 19, which is a spread page there, or spread pages. And then you'll have the Avengers covers. And then you'll have the variants as well. So I like that. He does the same thing with his own independent stuff like East of West. All the covers are kept in the back. So again, $44.99 has 518 pages. And all of this leading into the Times Runs Out storyline. Oh, actually, I did... <sighs> There's a really cool storyline here um, about time travel. Five years, 50 years, 500 years, 5,000 years. So we get to see like the first Avengers and then the future Avengers. I always thought that storyline was really cool. I'm a big fan of this run. Last but certainly not least is the Fantastic Four Antithesis Gallery Edition. Now I've done overviews on the channel about gallery editions before. So they're bigger format. Um, they're soft cover, but they're thicker than what your trades usually have. So for a size comparison, here we have it next to the size of an epic collection. To kind of give you an idea how much bigger these are. And like I said, the the cover while soft, it's still a little harder than your trade paperbacks. So this will be the same size as the History of the Marvel Universe or Fantastic Four Grand Design. So here we have Mark Wade, Neil Adams, Laura Martin, and then this is something that I loved seeing is Mark Farmer doing the inks. Holy crap, to put all this talent into one book, 
I had to put everything down I was doing. I got this on a Saturday during a live stream. Immediately following the live stream, I was like, well, I'm going to read this. This is way too cool not to read. So I had no idea it was coming out in gallery format, to, to be honest with you. I thought this was coming out, or I'm sorry, Treasury Edition. Um, this was coming out in trade paperback format. But lo and behold, here we have the Treasury Edition. It's a beautiful book. And part of me worried about Laura Martin's colors. And no offense to Laura Martin, she's a phenomenal colorist. But whenever you have a colorist doing modern colors on a classic artist like Neil Adams... Just look at some of the Neil Adams Batman omnibus, just saying. But no, it works here. And then you have Mark Farmer, one of my favorite inkers. He used to ink a lot of um, Alan Davis's work. Just cleaning up Neil Adams' style. Oh, it's so beautiful. Just look at that. It's so awesome. And to have it in this huge format, badass. Granted, I always got freaked out by Ben Grimm's teeth over here. <laughs> What's that about? But anyway. You know, that's just one panel. The rest of it is gorgeous. Sue looks absolutely stunning. Galactus looks humongous in this. Okay, so the basic premise is there is this unidentified flying object that's crashing on Earth, and the Fantastic Four are like, wait, it's going to destroy the city unless we stop it. And of course they stop it, and they find out it's not an unidentified flying object, but a really beat the hell Silver Surfer. So here's Norin all beat up. What happened to him? And he explains that Galactus got his ass handed to him by this creature known as the Antithesis. And it's kind of the opposite of Galactus, where Galactus eats planets, the Antithesis feed, or feeds planets. But feeds on what? You can find out for yourself. I'm not going to flip through everything here. Uh, Fantastic Four do end up like getting a new costume and all that and all this written by mark wade so this was a real fun read there's a couple easter eggs here for fans of the fantastic four and like i mentioned they get neil adams gets to redesign their costumes and let's just flip through a little more of these pages so you can just be amazed like i am and just like i remember opening this book up and i was just quiet i wasn't even i uh, most of the time i'm like hell yeah moments like that when i'm reading comics i really get into these things but this i was just admiring the artwork to to have it in this format in this oversized format and i'm going to show you a couple more from the later pages just making sure it doesn't spoil anything is what i'm doing but just so you can see some of the action sequences and let's do one more there are a lot of spread pages, much like this one, in the book. Now, this collects all four issues of that series, so what else is in here? Because this is 144 pages, and let me look. Because we also get a classic Neil Adams story. This is the third time I've talked about this particular issue. Oh, um, before we get to talking about this issue, all the variants are in the back here. This is where you'll find the variants for... The uh, mini series, the four issue mini series. And I don't want to flip through all of them so you can be surprised. But yes, this is issue 65 of X Men. This is the third time I've talked about it in a week. In my reading order, in last week's books, when we talked about the X Men Epic Collection, this was collected in there. And in my reading order, I have the Omnibus. So here it is in an even bigger format because these are bigger than the Omnibus format. Neil Adams. No Fantastic Four in this because I think this is the first work of Neil Adams in a Fantastic Four magazine, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if he's done a panel here or there, but I can't rem I can't remember if he's ever drawn any Fantastic Four. So please, by all means, correct me in the comments below. So this does have X-Men 65, which has his artwork, and then we also have this classic, beautiful issue drawn by Mike Waringo and written by Mark Wade from Fantastic Four number 60. Now it's Fantastic Four from 1998 after Heroes Return. So it's a different volume, it's volume two. And damn, this makes me wanna crack open my uh, Mark Wade Ringo Omnibus of Fantastic Four because it's just a beautiful story. And then in the very back, I think that's it. Yep, that's it. Because all the variants are kept here between Antithesis well, issue number four and X-Men number 65. But that, as they say, is that.
If you're interested in purchasing any of these books, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off retail price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you minties that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Mint Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your source for the hottest books with deep discounts, customer service, and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content and page count of each of these collections. Let me know in the comments down below which ones you're picking up. If you're getting Hickvengers in this format, in complete collection format, if you're happy to see the return of the Avengers Academy complete collection, I know I am. It's, it's one of my favorites. If you've checked out the Shang-Chi series, the new one, or the Fantastic Four Antithesis, again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. We can be found on Spreadshop and on Patreon. Amazing ways to support the channel. And more importantly, please, everybody, stay healthy, stay safe, and much love to all of you.